Hello everybody and welcome to this Rhino video tutorial. In today's tutorial, I would like to go through some of the features of the gumball. To activate it, make sure you click on the word gumball down by the modeling aids. Then, when selecting an object or a group of objects in Rhino, you'll see the widget appear. It is composed of arrows, arcs, and square handles. The arrows will allow us to move the object in that specific direction. If you click inside, you can enter a certain distance. Entering negative values will move the object in the opposite direction. The arcs will allow us to rotate the object. Similarly, we can just drag it or click inside to enter a specific degree. The square handles allow us to scale the object in that given direction. We can also click inside to enter a scale factor. For instance, 2 to scale the object twice its size in that direction. To scale an object uniformly, pull on any of the square handles while pressing the shift key down. As we rotate the views, small planes appear. These allow us to move the object in these two directions. All of the edits are happening from the gumball origin, which is the point in which all of the arrows meet. By right-clicking, we can access the gumball menu. This is slightly different than in V5 where we had an extra icon called the bunny tail that you needed to left click to access the menu. Let's take a look at a few options. Relocating the gumball allows you to reposition the gumball on the object. Now all of the transformations will happen from that point onward. We can also set the gumball to snappy dragging. This will force the gumball to pay attention to object snaps, allowing us to quickly snap objects together and align them. We can also configure how the gumball is aligned in 3D space. Say for the surface, let's set it to Object. This forces the arrows of the gumball to be aligned to the UV and normal directions of the surface. Now, let's take a look at the Copy feature. To make aligned copies using the gumball, select the object, press down the Alt key, and drag the object. We can also press down the Alt key, drag with the arrow, and before letting go of the mouse, type in a certain distance. Notice that there's a small plus sign right by the cursor indicating that it's not moving the objects, but making the copy. I can also use the gumball to extrude geometry. Let's take a look at that. I'll select the point, and notice that there is a small sphere midway on the arrows. This is the extrusion icon, new to V6. By pulling on it, I'll extrude a point into a line align into a surface, and a surface into a solid. Let's try that again. This time, I will pull on the sphere while holding down the Shift key. This will activate the Both Sides option. Again, new to V6. Now, 
pull on the sphere while pressing down the shift key. The geometry is now in the center of the extrusion. Combining sub-object selection with the gumball's editing capabilities can be very powerful. Let's take a look at that. Here I have a surface and a curve. I'll select them both and extrude. First, notice that the curve is extruded into an open object, while the surface is extruded into a solid. Sub-object selection means that I can access a sub-part of the object. For instance, I can sub-object select the upper edge of the surface by pressing down Ctrl and Shift and clicking on it. Then, while holding down the ALT key, I can drag it with the arrow, making it into its own independent curve. Let's try it out on the cylinder. I'll press down Ctrl and Shift and click on the upper surface. Hold down the ALT key and drag with the arrow. And now I've made an independent surface. Well, these objects preserve their integrity. Let's play around with this some more. Stick to the cylinder and see what else we can do. I will hold down the Control and Shift key and sub object select the upper surface. I can now edit this face. Let's scale it downward. Now this is still a single object for Rhino and a watertight solid. We edited one of its surfaces and the rest of the object followed along. I can now do that again and edit the height of the object. Or extrude that face into a cylinder. Again. I can change the height or make a new extrusion, adding a new edge at this point. This allows me to edit the upper face and limit the changes to the upper part. Again. Extrude this inward, pull the face down, extrude. You can continue editing the model. Well, those are the main features for the gumball. Thank you for watching.